All right, now we're going to learn a few more things. We're going to learn how to make one cell span over several rows and several columns, and we're going to learn how to make headers for the table. So let me see if I can explain how that works. Now, uh, what I've done is that I've increased the size of the table. If we take a look here in the browser, you'll see that I've created two extra rows. So now we have three columns and five rows. But what if I would like just one giant uh, cell going across all three columns in the top row? Well, there's a way that you can do that, and it's called call span. C-O-L-S-B-A-N, that's column span. So what I do is that I go into that first row. Here it is. So I've got the table row right here, and I've got three cells. Now, if I do a single cell across the entire row, that means I don't need these two extra rows. So I'm going to get rid of those. Now, normally, if I do that, that just leaves a couple of blank spaces over here. But we can add an attribute in HTML that will allow us to make this one cell reach over the other two columns. And the way to do that is to go into the TD and add a call span. We then say how many columns we want to span. So that includes the column that this cell is in. So it's going to go over a total of three columns. So now I save it and I go back to the table and I reload and there we go. You can see that now this one cell is spanning over all three columns right there. So that's how to do what's called a call span or a column span. So you can make one cell span over as many columns as you like. You could have one cell go over two columns, three columns, or as many columns as you have. Let's say, for example, that instead of doing call span three, I did call span two. Now that would mean that I'm only spanning over the first two columns, this one and this one. That means this would remain empty. And if I reload, sure enough, this third one is empty. I could then fill that with another TD, and that would just be a normal, uh, a normal cell that would be only over one column. But I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to make it back into uh, three and save it again. And once again, we have the call span of three. All right, so uh, that's called the call span, but there's also something called a row span. Now for this one, let me see if I can demonstrate it by going back over here. Now here I have one cell going over three columns and I have three columns over here. What if I would like to add a fourth column on the left? but I want it to be basically across all these different rows. So instead of, um, of just taking these, this first column and joining them together, I'm just gonna create a completely new column over here. And the way I would do that is that I would go again into my first table row, and before that uh, call span TD, I would create a TD here and this one, I would say row span. Now, how many do I need to do here? Well, you need to have the total number of rows that you're going to be spanning, and that would include the one that you're in right now. Right now, we're right here at the beginning of this row, so there's a total of five rows. So I'm going to say row span equals five, and I'm just going to say hello right there. And now, when I go over to my table, and if I reload, there is my, uh, my one cell, which spans five rows. Now, if I want to, I could do the same thing for these uh, four or even five uh, rows right over here. I could use this column, and I could join this and this and this and this. But if I wanted to do that, then I would have to erase this cell, this cell, and this cell, and then change this cell so that it has a row span of four. One, two, three, four. But I just didn't want to go through the process of erasing a TD, TD, and TD to get rid of these three and then make that one. But you can see how that works. So we can make cells that span rows, or we can make spells, 
uh, cells that span columns. So that's how you would do that. Now I'm going to get rid of this whole first row and that'll get rid of my row span and my column span. Now that'll only leave us with four rows, but that's okay. So now I've just deleted that first row and now I'm gonna reload. So like I said, only four rows remain. Okay, so now that I've shown you how to do a column span and a row span, I'd like to show you how to do table headers. Now table header is what you have at the top of a table so that you can give a title to each column. So I'm going to do a very simple process. I'm going to change the TDs in the first column, I'm sorry, in the first row, I'm going to change it from TD to TH. So instead of table data, we've got table header, just like that. So when I do that, you'll see that the information changes just a little bit. I'm going to reload, and now you can see that it's become bold. Now, this might not be very clear because the table is so small, so let me give the table a width of a larger amount. So let me say width equals uh, 400 pixels. And now when I reload, you'll see that something else has happened. Not only has this, these, this first row gone bold, but it's also been centered. And that's what table headers are about. So if this were a table uh, about, for example, people, then this might be name and hobby and height or something like that. Uh, and then down in these rows, you'd have the information about each person, Tom and Betty and Frank, uh, and then all the information here. So these are the table headers. So if you'd like to have the top row be bold and centered so that you can style some headers for your tables, you would use TH in your first row instead of TD. So that is a quick introduction as to how to do uh, uh, table column spans and row spans and table headers. As with the other videos, you should be doing this yourself. So if you haven't done this along with the video, please make sure to open up your file and to make all these changes yourself so that you can see how they're done.